Right, let's start the process as the engineer or the person scheduling the test would start it. So we're going to open up our lab scheduling application. This is a free application as part of the key AGS free version. The first thing it asks you to do is select an AGS file. So we're going to go browse and then we're going to select this one here and open it up. So it will now read that AGS file, bring in all the sampling information. If you don't have an AGS file, you can always create one very simply out of Excel. But here we see we've got 2,722 samples written, um, or read rather, as part of that uh, project. And here we have the project ID and the project name. So we go next. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse to my location to find my laboratory data selection. So this is the lab I'm working with today. They've only got three tests, so I'm going to make the most of it and schedule all three. Um, these files here that we've just uh, pulled down from the selection, they can be lab specific. So a lab can send out the data um, to you with their uh, information, so you can import this straight in. Okay, so now we've got those, we go into our standard scheduling window. Let's maximize this. So we've got our scheduler name, um, the due date or turnaround time. Well, let's set the due date to be the end of this week. Um, we can filter by locations if we want. It's very handy if you've got big projects. So now we can go down and we can specify a few tracks or testings, uh, a whole set of moisture contents, and let's go down and do some sieves like so. We'll put in some remarks. Uh, please supply AGS data with results. Uh, give it any chain of custody reference that we've got on our paperwork. And then simply we go next. This now generates this into an AGS file. It allows us to save it. So I'm going to call this one um, AGTA2 for import. Okay, I'm going to save that file like so. So just a little message at the end, uh, 17 laboratories are successfully created and the file has been created as we asked it to. Very good. So we'll now close that lab scheduler and we'll go into our key lab application. So now we're changing hats and we are the laboratory if you like. You see key lab sits inside Microsoft Excel, it's just a tab in Excel 2003, 2007 or 2010. I'm using it here in 2010. We can go to our schedule window and we can go to import the schedule. And here we can go and find our folder and we can go and get the file that we just created, AGSA2 for import. We can open that up. That will now go through. Would you like to create the project? Yes, please. We'll give it a, a, a project name for our laboratory system here. And it will now go in and it's now, as we can see, it's told us what it's done. It's generated some samples. It's imported the samples with all the information. Those are the samples that we scheduled. Uh, it's mapped in our triaxles and our moistures and our sieves. Next. And there now we can see the schedule. So this is, uh, as you can see, very similar to the one that's standalone, but this is inside Keylab itself. And everything the client scheduled has come through. You do have right click options here that you can rem add methods, preparation requirements or test dependent options and that functionality is also available in the standalone schedule. Okay, so we're going to finish that now and we can now see that that schedule has been added to our list of schedules that we've got currently working through the laboratory. It's marked as scheduled at the moment, it's not in progress so none of the lab staff know that that schedule exists at the moment but we can now go through and we can set that status to be scheduled to be in progress rather. So that's now in progress and all the lab sheets have now immediately been created for us. So let's have a look at that, what that actually means and how it works. So let's go to that schedule, AGTA2. Let's close that and we'll go to our tests window. Now our tests window shows all of the tests that we've currently got working throughout our laboratory. And we can go down at the moment, they're grouped by test types. So this is everything that's active within the laboratory. I just want to look at AGA T2 and now we can see all the things that we have actually scheduled. So we had uh, four triaxles, four sieves um, and a whole load of moisture contents. Now the beauty of the system is that if you want to open that lab sheet, simply just double click on it and it will come away and it will open that Excel spreadsheet and here you can see that 
all the information for that project has come through and any test dependent options, preparation, dependencies, etc. would have also come through onto the lab sheet. So the lab sheet, that lab sheet is ready to go. And in fact, if we just close that down again and go to tests and filter by a project, this time if we open all of the sieves, so select them all, right click and open, what happens now is we've got our four test sheets ready to go. And here you can see as we scroll between, they're all ready to go. And we can now effectively go print all pages to the printer and they'll print out in black and white um, and they now have pre-printed lab sheets. So I've reached that holy grail of data management. I haven't typed any data yet. In fact I haven't typed anything except my project ID in Keylab. So in terms of um, how this works for technicians, let's go back now um, and go into our tests tab. Let's bring up those tests again and let's go and select a moisture content. Now I'm actually going to select several and I'm going to open them with a group input sheet. Okay, so this is going to put multiple samples on one sheet like so and here within this sheet I'm going to put in some just basic data. So the beauty of the key lab system is because the lab sheets were created using key lab and they were pre-printed with all the project information in the top. When the technician comes back to type the data in they've got exactly what they've got in their hand is exactly what they see on the screen and the training course goes along the lines of fill in the blank boxes okay so I'm just going to put some very basic data in here just to get ourselves some information so there we have our moisture content of 100% slightly unusual but we'll just work with that for now for that sample and I simply go save or, or I could say I've completed this set of tests and save Okay, so the lab manager will know exactly what's being completed and, and progressed. But that's really it. The training course for technicians with uh, something like Keylab is tests, find the one you're working on, um, and then double click, fill in the green boxes. That's literally it. In fact, we can make this slightly easier because the lab manager can assign tests to a certain person and then when that person logs on they'll only see the tests that are effectively assigned to them so that works nicely and we can also say when we want those tests to be carried out so we can set the due date to be tomorrow so again when this person logs on they will effectively see all of the information coming up um, for just the tests that they've got to do okay let's look at um, taking the information further here's a triaxial test um, what we've got here we can effectively be importing data logger information or we can uh, type in our own results whichever way you prefer to use it um, again if you're using electronic and automated testing methods in the laboratory then you should be able to export the data from the software that you're using um, and bring it into uh, into Keylab in a common format okay so let's now look at the uh, outputs side of things effectively we can do uh, test reports so we can do them either in terms of uh, tracks or data that we've just pulled out for a particular project uh, select the project select the work orders select the samples that we're actually wanting to work with um, and finish and effectively we'll produce there four sets of tracks or information we obviously put any data into this project but you can scroll through the output sheets and then you can print them all out in the same way that we've seen or the other thing that is uh, quite common is to do them into a summary sheet format so here we're going to go uh, Atterberg results I'm going to go again for our project pull up everything whether we've done it or not and here we're going to select all of those samples and finish now this time what will happen is you see we've got all of the sampling information for all of our samples and there's the moisture content that we put earlier in the in the demonstration but here we've got one output sheet showing multiple results and we've got it from the moisture content test um, the Atterberg tests we could put strength we could put the rest of our classification tests on here no problems at all so we could have a summary sheet or multiple summary sheets per test to show various things final thing I'm going to show is uh, we're going to want to export some AGS data to the client so we're going to go out into AGS RTA uh, we're going to go into uh, our project our data uh, all our tests and here we can specify what tests we want I'm just going to do moisture contents we could restrict it to samples if we wanted to but I'm going to finish that off now and 
give it a name and save. So yes, and off it goes. And this is the process, there we go, of creating an RTA AGS file. Now let's go and quickly look at that file. Uh, here it is. We'll open it up in just simple notepad and down the bottom here we can see the moisture content results in RTA AGS format with the specimen information and our moisture content result and there's the hundred that we put in on that spreadsheet. So there we go, a very quick demonstration of how commercially available software such as Keylab can handle AGS data and how it can really help you adopt those two golden rules of data entry. I hope that's been a useful presentation. Okay, so there you go, you've seen quite a lot there on how Keylab works, how the AGS data format has enabled the data to move seamlessly between the clients and the lab and probably back again from the lab to the client. Um, if you want some more information, you want some demonstration of Keylab, anything else, go on to our website uh, for the uh, conference, www.kinetics.com slash AGTA2011 or email me at roger.chandler at kinetics.com. If you're interested in, in representing Kinetics or being an agent for any one of our software products, please also contact me as I'll be glad to hear from you. Hope you've enjoyed the presentation. I hope it's been interesting um, and I look forward to meeting you at a conference or in your office shortly.